all the cape open to as if we're flying towards the camera. No, hold it open. Okay. Yeah. Kind of fly towards the camera. Fly. The portrait, a portrait or painting or portrait of Salvador Dali, and um, which is a picture of her taken down on the floor painting, and Dali is posing in that photo. It's a picture that has a lot of uh, love and. Uh, an art artistic manner. Um, she would like to encourage me now to return in a way to some modeling career, which could be interesting for for my life. I was an actress, and I have made a leading role with uh, the actor Klaus Kinski in a film mm -hmm. which was a film when I was uh, playing a um, very young uh, French uh, French girl that was uh, that was meeting someone such as Kinski and uh, the acting in that film was extremely beautiful. And if it comes my way, I wish to be playing in a film again as <laughs> an actress. I uh, came to be 26 years old at this time with my twin brother. Uh, my my twin brother has been uh, living in America. With us. Mm. He also has been a uh, few years ago performing in a nightclub. My mother also did some uh, singing. We wish to return uh, to work into the artist object because. We are, in a way, very, very famous, and we deserve the fame that that bring us to the world. Mm -hmm. We deserve to to be thanked for the work that we are all giving. Thank you, sweetheart. The Lord of Purple, soft looking. I am sometimes been uh, in films uh, playing as an actress but that does not mean that I should not be with my mother when I play um, comedy theater or films or um, now she's helping me very much to <coughs> Uh, sincerely understand more about the the fame of fashion which I did a show with her about yesterday that was that was an exception exceptional uh, show 
I think that in the world it will be uh, it will be thanked again or looked at again. Um, just very interesting. Do you feel like talking about being pregnant at all? I think that for a woman being pregnant and waiting that a child comes for her is the best of everything that a lady could possibly possibly be dreaming about. And I think that in the world, if there are some women that that are less of a woman for those circumstances are to be uh, dressed and well to care for the life of their children. I right now don't live with the father because um, I feel like I have to to be um, to be understood as much as uh, understanding comes from sometimes, and um, it is uh, perhaps uh, in my life that I come to the subject. Of, uh, of being happy and and being cherished to do something good and it should be be in that category always stay together for those things. With a child, you will be sometimes always welcomed, and sometimes you always have to wait once you have your child. It's with you, and it is uh, it is very pretty to be a mother and to have a child. I already have one child, uh, which I named Donovan. Atar, and it's uh, very beautiful. And um, I feel like that child really is somebody. And I also feel like this child loves me very much. And um, I I understand that. Um, they intend to to find the going with the with the love instance to wait for a lot of love, which certain children ought to do somewhat. And uh, I think it's good bringing up a child in a good environment and uh, giving them what they would like to receive is a good way of, uh, of bringing up a child. Do you think your child's in a good environment? You have to go there. John is on the telephone. Okay. I think that that question is too... Um, too much. Hello. You can forget it's a about good it. Question. Yeah, hi. It's a good question. But yes, I uh, did. I hadn't heard to answer you. this question, I, I mean, think that. Huh? Um, what? He oh, that's loves good. Me very much, and I know that. Hmm? That he really feels yeah. like when he's with me, he really feels like like it's another hmm? world. And, uh, so beautiful. To make a child oh. being happy. Well, that's good because I have to go to the uh, nice. 
SSI office and uh, I paper. think that I have some people like uh, my father which uh, it was an artist story. when he was younger he was I'd rather you uh, he was an talk artist he did a moment. film called Chow Manhattan we're in the middle of being filmed Chow Manhattan that they passed yep, in video records of Easy Ride yeah no, which I have seen. I just got in from the uh, about doing two laundry years ago, two years and a half ago. Huh? Uh, it was uh, no. A this is a girl we met, and uh, <coughs> and she's my doing a, to help me with my a story on pregnant women right now in my life. <laughs> but Penelope is. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, mm. it's good to. Yeah, but her lawyer said that they'll try to take this one away too. And uh, well, from both of them. So <coughs> he said we should move, get out of town. Yeah. As long as you are beautiful, we can always make your beauty last. Well, that's what I'd like to discuss with you in length, you know, to try to figure something out. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, I have some photos of my yeah. son. Yeah. Well, I'll we check it out and, and we'll see. Do you think Penelope could possibly move there before me? And very capable. And uh, he has a mm -hmm. very beautiful face. Mm. Which, like She's doing very like well, but like I mean, it's they are it such from God. in that um, whole thing that I have threatened to expose feel. them with, uh, you know, uh, you can take this too if you're taping, because this is the whole story, you know, to expose them in, um, in newspapers, what they're doing. The first report they did about her was a bunch of crap, and uh, they are, I think they're pretty sick. I mean, they're, they're hunting for babies to take away, and even when the person does everything correctly, they still will look for something to take away a baby, and that can definitely screw up a baby to uh, <coughs> find itself with parents who are not blood relatives, because some are okay, but some are really awful. Uh, well, Joe uh, just hasn't gotten it together right now, so Penelope has her own room over here, and he might get things together, but he might not. I mean, he applied for SSI, and that might come through. He was a bit vague about what he was going to do, so. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Sure. But I mean, if he gets the SSI, he will, uh, that will permit them to travel if they're still together. I mean, I really don't know what their plans are, but I would like to move her out of this town because uh, I guess what I've seen is really uh, sickening. Uh, we found these, uh, this suit in a free box. And this dress, also this lovely retro dress, we found it uh, thrown out in front of the store. And this suit, too, um, isn't that lovely? The suit and the shirt just thrown out. We shop in free boxes, right? <laughs> a very millionaire from a free box. It's funny, everything. And that cushion, and that chair, and that chair, and the... Uh, Lovely retro typewriter green for Ivy, uh, which I'm going to use to write the um, other half of my life story. I've already written 60 pages up to Andy Warhol. <laughs>
and uh, from there on, and then it's going to be rewritten by a real writer in a style, and my book will finally come out. There are people running up to me, when is it coming out? I want to buy it. Will you get that book out? Oh, this is a story about uh, Jack Nicholson is my husband. I was madly uh, infatuated with him or in love with him and um, I was ranting and raving about him in Paris to this friend of mine who s I said, oh, I'd love to meet him. And um, this friend said, what do you mean you'd love to meet him? You married him. And I said, what? absurd and he said oh no at Peter Knowles party he called Mexico and got you married by proxy and uh, I think I was in a blackout I must have been my first blackout because I don't I don't remember um, it at all and I doubt if he does and it would be nice to know I mean why become a bigamist <laughs> but uh, of course he never told me but I did want to meet him and I did in the uh, Saloon in San Francisco, that's why we all came <coughs> here in the first place. What year was came that? to meet Jack Nicholson. What year was uh, that? My, uh, in November 85. My uh, fortune teller told me I would meet him in San Francisco, and I did. Uh, 88 or 89. I had a black eye, which I covered up with makeup. I'm kind of half blind now, and um, I walked into a glass store looking at a Japanese garden and knocked myself out so they put uh, white makeup on and I really love it though the sun really lit it it wasn't unnatural lighting and it, I think it's really lovely. And Salvador Dali did quite an extraordinary portrait of me uh, in the nude when I was in my third month of pregnancy with the twins and I had quite enormous boobs and uh, was a lot heavier but the portrait is utterly magnificent and uh, Will, uh, Milton Green photographed it and it's in the um, in Milton Green's archives I mean his files which his children inherited and if they don't do anything with it there it's stuck all the portraits that have ever been made of me and there have been quite a few Ernest Fuchs actually did the best one, but that <coughs> I sold to uh, Count Song because um, it's safer in his castle. I'm sure someone would have stolen it from me. So that one's there, but Dolly did really a magnificent one. And this is just me doing Dolly's portrait, because I draw it too. I did, um, my best portrait was of Andy Warhol. It took uh, one year to do, and he posed for one year. This is my first article that came out when uh, when I became homeless. It came the first magazine to write about it was People magazine, and all the magazines all around the world got interested in this famous model who had worked with Andy Warhol seven years, who had lived in a castle, uh, graced the covers of Bazaar and Vogue suddenly wound up homeless, so it just, you know, made top publicity, nine television shows, including Larry King, and how do you How do you explain how that happened? Uh, it happened because uh, San Francisco was a strange place. No one believed who we were. There are a lot of nuts running around saying they're Napoleon or Mussolini and they're married to Sophia Loren. So we came over saying all these things and no one would believe us and no one gave us work. And we literally locked ourselves in our rooms in the Hotel San Juan and called and tried to get auditions. And nothing happened and six months went by and we had run out of money because we were in a very expensive hotel in a very expensive neighborhood in North Beach and um, when the money ran out, my son was invited to uh, to spend some time with my nephew who had a small studio and my son shared that but my daughter and I were literary, literary out in the studio and I remember the first evening we slept in North Beach on the pavement and it was pretty cold and I petted her head and I said, 
oh we'll something will happen Penelope don't worry we'll uh, something will happen mm. <laughs> and uh, then we met the parky people and they used to have barbecues in the park mm. and that was fun this is my first bow uh, Count Franco Mancinelli Scotchi and I'm wearing a mink coat and a cat mask borrowed by a princess. This is a recent photo in uh, New York and he is my Viscount son, the son of um, Count Napoleon, Darius Napoleon. He's a fantastic singer and guitarist. And this was taken in San Francisco in 89. <laughs> Uh, this is the double wedding, my mother, my father, in the 30s. It was during the Depression and it was less expensive to uh, get married with uh, two couples than one. And this is me as a photographer in Paris with my son, Darius. This is his father's castle. It was our secondary home, right here. This was the color of the Washington Times. This was taken when, it says, from riches to rags, it's when I was li living in the park. I mean, I was in this for a while. Or I had slept in a shelter the, the evening it was taken. And shelters are dangerous, too. It was not a very, you know, it was, uh, fortunately, I had a good makeup artist because I really didn't look that well during that period, as far as I'm concerned. Of course, I dressed like an ele the most elegant bag lady in existence, but... This is my boyfriend and I, 1990, dancing in New York at Bear Jones' party. Bear Jones, uh, this is a caricature of Taylor Mead. He gives the best parties in New York with the real jet set at last. Uh, this is 1951 when I began my modeling career in Paris. This is modeling for Jacques Grief. Me on the phone in my cute little hotel room on Rue Galilee. It was a very elegant hotel. It had this was a little terrace. And this is all couture clothing. This is me as a blonde in 1951 in Brazil, modeling for Maggie Roof. And he is my son, who has an enormous amount of talent, but as he speaks very bad English, people keep thinking he's insane and locking him up, and I have to keep getting him out. He speaks in, in a, a fantasy world, but I know he's not mad. Gunter Ethan Palmer, the best, the most good looking man in the world. I think six foot two, ash blonde hair, blue eyes, really good looking. Oh, uh, this is me singing in uh, Lips Underground when my singing debuts. And when this came out, that I had been living in the street, newspapers from all over the world came trying to find me. It was difficult to find me to write these articles, because when you live in the park, you really live in the park, where you find a hallway here and there, and like they were all looking for me, and they found me finally. So I did a lot of articles, and then and had, got an agent, and got an apartment. This is a Vogue cover, a Vogue cover, my daughter and I in Paris. Uh, my granddaughter, Gunther's daughter, and my grandson Donovan, Penelope's son. This is me in New York, 1990. Uh, this is me at about 12, week 16. This is after Penelope, so I was about 35, I think. 33. This is a portrait of Andy Warhol. Oh no, this must have been in 69. Yeah. Uh, Penelope on the cover of Jour de France with one of the presidents of, um, of France, Giscard d'Estaing. And this was during a movie of me during my Warhol period. Very actress. It's not really a model photo. So. 
Two. 